Hello, Anthony. Hello, Claudine. Today we're here to talk about some IRS business practices. Yes. And what we're going to do at the end is we're going to rate the IRS and maybe Congress on our BS meter. And That's see, right. See how many pieces of poop they should be each yeah, be assigned. Right. <laughs> so this all stemmed from an IRS press release that we received. Uh, the IRS used to be so bold as to say, we will never call you about a tax debt. Never. Mm. That's changing. Right. You noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. We noticed, you know, this is, there's just some catchphrases we know so much that when Claudine saw this press release, she immediately said, wait, something is different. What's that thing that's different? Well, so now don't forget, later this spring, outside agencies are authorized to contact taxpayers about their unpaid tax accounts. So private de debt collectors will, will be calling right. people. Okay. So the press release said, IRS reminds seniors to remain on alert to phone scams during tax season. IRS Commissioner John Koskinen, quote, said, the IRS warns seniors about these aggressive phone calls that can be frightening and intimidating. The IRS doesn't do business like that. Right. So instead of the IRS will never call you, right. the IRS doesn't do business like so, that. So there's been a few things to change from, wait, why? how does the IRS go from not calling you to calling you? Well, the FAST Act of 2015, mm -hmm. right? I got my year right there, uh, mandated that the IRS send out bad debts to collection agencies. The IRS has tried this on their own before and failed and say, stop doing it. Mm -hmm. But Congress knew better. Yes. Say, you guys think that's bad debt? No, 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 no. 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 Here, we just send it here. Money. And that was part of the, the whole entire budgeting scam that mm -hmm. goes on where Congress can invent revenue sources to offset new spending. Mm -hmm. The spending happens. The new revenue sources never do. No one's ever held accountable. They all get reelected. Everybody's happy except everyone else. else. Yeah. Okay, so the IRS is not frightening and intimidating. They don't do business like that, That's Anthony. Never. <laughs> so while we don't expect debt collectors to necessarily get raving reviews right. on Go Google right. and BBB, um, they did a great job finding me. I tried to hide, <laughs> but man, those guys were good. Right, and the, 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 if I would expect that, you know, maybe if someone had a collection, you know, was used as people for collections, hey, this was a great collections agency, they were able to, you know, take this bad debt and find some people, give me some money. Right. No one really leaves reviews <laughs> like that. It's really the people they're collecting from and then some people they're not collecting from. Mm -hmm. But we did find some sort of uh, patterns in a lot of the reviews that these debt collection agencies got. Yeah. So, again, not frightening and intimidating. <laughs> but let's go through some of the reviews. Okay. From There's four different private debt collection okay. agencies. Uh, let me start with this. <clears throat> I spoke with a supervisor, and she had one of the worst attitudes I've ever experienced in a human being. This lady can best be described as rude, unprofessional, selfish, selfish and obviously lacked people skills. I spoke to a guy who used obscene language toward me. This agency is practicing unethical business tactics, and they need to be investigated. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds like it could be a little <coughs> frightening or intimidating. Yeah, right. So it's not it's not necessarily wow. They're not friendly. Mm -hmm. they're n so you're saying? <laughs> wait a second. So you're saying someone who's working at collections in somewhere in upstate New York, um, with this angry, bitter weather, mm -hmm. isn't all friendly and sunshine? How about these people are a bunch of rude, lying thugs who will harass you to get your money? That sounds uh. sort of intimidating. Uh, Conserve is a rude bunch of collection thugs who will deceptively try to obtain information. These folks are not good people. Wait, here's my favorite. <laughs> Some guy wrote a two-word review. It said, relentless asshats. <laughs> <laughs> These people are deceptive at best. I found Conserve to be abusive. There, so you're on Conserve, and that's yep. the one in Fairport, New York. Yep. That's in upstate New York. I'm totally appalled by their business practice. They're too stupid and rude to deal with. They're not willing to work with you. They're very rude and inconsiderate. They've broken Section 805 of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, which in many cases has been taken to court because of it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the supervisors are rude and raise their voices to customers. OMG, what a group of asses. Rude, obnoxious, clear harassment, and extremely bad at their job. Wait, somebody left a five star on one of these though. So oh yeah, there was a couple. There was a. I have an amazing experience with Conserve. I had a rough patch in the financial part of my life. My own sense of defaulting. For the last year, my wages have been guarding. It's been horrible. I got a call from Matt S at Conserve, and he told me his job was to get me in a repayment program, and not to collect money. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, instantly, I felt more comfortable talking to him because I didn't have the money. I, obviously, 
I would not have been in this situation in the first place. He said there were three programs. One was to pay it off entirely with the discount. Second was make three installments, pay it off. Third was make payments based on income. In the end, I end up doing the program on household income. Now I pay $5 a month, and my wages are no longer earned. Okay. Wait. And that's, I don't know. But that, wait. What? Doesn't that sound exactly like somebody at Conserve wrote it? Like no, they gave it's the a three thing. specific. Shelby oh. Critchfield. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. She's legit. Mm-hmm. She's got to be legit. I went to the Google Maps for her. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's just the, yeah, no, Sally made two contributions. Let's see what the other one is. Don't be, come on. I have a lot of faith in Sally. She would not be a scam. Um, let me see what her other reviews were. One of my favorites she's, while you're looking for the two <laughs> reviews. She hasn't okay. done anything but left two reviews. Uh, it's not giving me the other review. Uh, yeah, yeah, because it's Sally at concert. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my! I'll read you one. One of my favorites is the, uh, a guy that actually used to work for them. Oh. One of the worst companies I've ever had the pleasure of working for. My company was acquired by these guys. The amount of shadiness occurring here is on the level of pitch black. That's not a shade. No, it's really not. Right now, we don't know. We, we don't know if these, you know, these are just a lot of reviews, and we mm-hmm. would expect negative people. But there's also, we, there was also a lot of reviews. Um, what collection agencies do is they skip trace. That is when someone, when a debt goes away, somebody, they can't find someone. They go around and cl- call people that lived at previous addresses, neighbors, relatives, to say, hey, do you know who this person is? Do you know where they went? I got a call. From a private deck collection agency yeah. years ago about somebody that I was friends with on Facebook that I used to date that apparently owed a bunch of money. And they actually, oh, here was one that really pissed me off. Um, perhaps someone who lived at my address now mm-hmm. might have run up a student loan debt of $50,000. Mm-hmm. I got a call on my cell phone. Hmm. Hey, we're looking for this person. And I said, look, uh, I know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you because that's pretty scummy. You got my cell phone number, mm-hmm. and you're looking for this part. This is why you're calling me because I live at this address, and your technology found my cell number. Right. So, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. So, good luck. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks. So, that's pretty, I mean, they just, I mean, really invasive trying to find people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, but wait, that's why? Not, that's not how the IRS that's does not how the IRS Definitely. When these people make the IRS calls, they're going to be very, very polite. Very, polite. very pl- right. Well, they're just hey guys, guys, let's get together, group hug mm-hmm. before we make our today's calls. Before we do our outreach of the day, mm-hmm. let's get we got some important people to get to, and we're not going to be rude. No, because the IRS does not operate that way. No, never has, never will. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, now you're saying you're not surprised by how this is going. Oh, not nothing. I think this is the thing. Nothing that happens surprises me. And that's what's scary. When you when when everything that happens happens because you know what's going to happen, that the 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 various power structures are in place, that things like this are what happens. These absurd results that ultimately end up screwing people and put them in a harsh place that violate the express thing that they said. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. It does that exact thing. Mm-hmm. Um, cause he, let's think about the various, uh, the various power structures in place. You know, when Trump was elected, you know, people were like, oh, that's it. He's going to put the IRS in, in their place. And I'm like, look, I voted for Trump, but I'm like, there's no way that's happening. The IRS is its own country. It, it is. It's its own country. We lived in occupied IRS land. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's, the, that's a fact. So get that clear. We live in their land. And if you disagree with me, just wait. <laughs> wait for a call like this. <clears throat> so that, I mean, here's John Koskinen, right? John Koskinen, no one's going to come in. No one's going to claim that John Koskinen was really a great commissioner. I'm um, John Koskinen. Uh, <laughs> I'm a great commissioner. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> let me do my lizard impersonation. Um, <laughs> he came in as a partisan hack to cover up the uh, uh, IRS scandal mm-hmm. of targeting conservative groups. That's why he came in. There's no other reason why he came in, and everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. Yet, and so you're like, there's Trump. He's in office. He's got a new secretary treasurer, and guess who still is the commissioner? This most partisan bag man who clear – I mean, he's, I mean, this guy has you know, negative charisma. <laughs> it's true. I mean, look at the guy. I mean, I mean, and I mean this. Like, John, you're doing great with, with the tools the Lord has given you. You have, you have come really far with everything you know, on the whole. Mm-hmm. Your station in his life, you have definitely punched higher than your weight class with everything you've been getting. 
And here, there he still is. Mm -hmm. Going around making, hey, look, I'm John Koskinen of the IRS. Um, so he's still there, even though it's like, how could this be? Mm -hmm. It's because they are. Because no one can control them. They're out of control. There's no controls. And Congress never helps anything. They never help anything. It's the situation we have, oh, you, we, have, um, we have Congress, uh, or we have the IRS acting inappropriately. What should we do? Uh, should we impeach and remove people, or should we just cut their budget? Well, you know, impeaching and removing people kind of requires us to stick our neck out and actually stand up for something. So we'll just be, we'll take the passive aggressive way and just sort of cut their budget a little bit. That will get them. Yeah. Well, it just doesn't get them because all it does is, well, well, you're not cutting the budget of the people at the IRS. They're there. The only people you're screwing is the people who the IRS was going to hire. So the people at the IRS, you didn't really affect them. Mm -hmm. They're fine. They're like, no, we're kind of still They're going. still getting their uh, benefits They're and still their getting paychecks. Their, and their guaranteed COLA, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And you can't get that in the private sector. No. Um, so they get a guaranteed cost of living uh, adjustment increase. So they're doing fine. Mm -hmm. And all you're doing is like, well, they're making – and the thing is like they always have – now this is the thing too is you, you, you decrease their budget. Well, that's great. If I was at the IRS, it would be great because I have an excuse. Hey, why didn't you perform? Well, you yeah. cut budget, budget cuts. Budget cuts. Spend. No matter Ooh. what happens – it's budget cuts. So any accountability, if there was any to begin with, mm -hmm. sorry, we're just not given the tools we need in order we're to crack down on, on, on taxpayers. Yeah. Now, there are some people at the IRS who do say, okay, how are we going to get more bang for our buck? Mm -hmm. And they create these systems in this process. And we've talked about these a lot. Yeah. A lot of the new audit rules going into effect. The IRS is trying to squeeze more money out of each. You know, There's, there's fewer and fewer auditors, so they got to get more and more money. So they have come up with ways to go after people with horrific penalties for small technicalities. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get it. So that this, this idea that you're going to limit the power of the IRS by reducing their budget is so stupid. And yeah, it, they, it, keep, it's, they keep collecting more and more money right, every year. And they get the money. And they're, yeah. it's like you haven't done anything. Their authority is, is, is even bigger because you are afraid to, to make the simplest confrontation to say, here it is. You took the Fifth Amendment. Um, when you testified to Congress on about the targeting of conservatives, yeah, and we, we you took the fifth, and we just can't bring up the courage to charge you. We can't bring up any of the political courage to charge you. Mm -hmm. So you know, and, and here we have the the budget. You know, the the the, the, the Republicans who were so you know, oh boy, they were they were they were uh, campaigning hard on repealing Obamacare. You know, they passed the repeal of Obamacare sixty times when Obama was president. Suddenly, they don't know what that bill looks like when it's possible that Trump could sign it into law. So they go and they create some dumb thing mm -hmm. that really doesn't, it's not the promise, and, and it's just a cowardly thing. So that's where you need to know. It's like the number, you know, I would say that's one of the most abundant um, resources of Washington is cowardice. So let's now go to our BS meter. Okay. Um, we want to see how many pieces of poop. Let's start with the IRS. Okay. I'm only going to give the IRS one piece of poop on this. No kidding. Yeah, because... Uh, you know, um, this isn't really, really IRS's. This is not the IRS's decision. Mm -hmm. They tried this; they stopped doing it, but Congress is forcing them. So, okay. you know, John Costigan is like, "What else is he going to say?" The IRS doesn't work like that. He, he might agree with, like, "Yeah, this is a dumb idea," but I can't say that. Mm -hmm. This is a really stupid idea. I wish Congress thought things through before they did stupid things like this because I have limited resources. All it's going to do is create, you know, more. Uh, people with tax, you know, the taxes are going to call into ACS, the IRS number, and overwhelm the system. It's like, this is ineffective what you've done, and you've overwhelmed our limited resources. That would be a much better press release. Right, and that's what he, <laughs> he cool. you know, but he can't do that. Well, right. we have to, it's a great idea, and we just simply don't work that way. Um, so they, yeah, I'll just give them one. Okay, what about know? Congress then? Congress gets our four. They four get pieces four full pieces of poop on this one. Okay. Um, they just are, you know, th just the amount of cowardice. Um, the, the number one, no, the, the ridiculousness of the pay-go budgeting where they do these tricks mm -hmm. to try to make it look like nothing's going to cost anything. Because of part of PATH Act, too, we have the passport law. Mm -hmm. um, and then part of pay-go budgeting, we had the FACA. You know, we, all this terrible thing comes from Congress who all, you know, they're like, oh, we want to spend, but we don't want to be accused of spending. Mm -hmm. So it's this cowardice. You can't just say, oh, no, I think this is a good way, way to spend it. Yes, and I think we found on a, a many of these laws, congressmen and women that have voted yes for the law, but then they go back and they are like, we should re re repeal this law. This is terrible. They don't know what they passed. Right, like, they don't no, read this, everything. This was part of what you passed. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're violently opposed to what they passed. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing that's going to happen. They're like, well, we're actually not going to repeal it. We're going to talk about repealing it. Right, so that I look good. 
That's I what's look important. Good. Yeah. I want to look good, and I don't want to look like the coward that I am. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. yeah, so I would say four big old pieces of poop for Congress. And also, I think the President Obama deserves uh, a few pieces of poop because he did sign it into law. Um, not that he actually read anything e either. Hmm. Here, just do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really where we are. Sort of the um, harsh reality of a political world. So this is the result, is these, these things that are completely inconsistent. And the, really, the biggest benefit, the people benefiting from this stupid, stupid idea the most, are those call centers making scam calls to the IRS. Because before, when scam, scam calls were made, IRS, oh, no, we never call people. Now that's changed. Actually, we do call people. Yeah. So we've talked about how easy it would be to send letters to people before you call them with a scam call. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's your confirmation code. Yeah, be sure to have it. Hey, do you, then when you call them, do you have that confirmation code we gave you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we could validate your information. Okay, so this is what you owe. Go to Target, get your gift card. Yes. Uh, which is... I'm going to keep you on the phone while you drive to Target. While you keep it... Right. And, and I wonder... And this is something we were looking for was... The, I wonder if those scam IRS call centers mm -hmm. have a higher rating on BBB. <laughs> they were very that, nice. Right. Like, and it was very convenient that I could go to Target to get the gift cards because I, I needed to stop to get a few window dressings and, and whatnot. <laughs> um, so I wonder. It's like, yeah, because you really can't do worse than these collection agencies. Mm -hmm. So maybe they would. Yeah, I knew it was a scam call, but I was really lonely. And they filled my day with something. I had somebody to talk to. I had so <laughs> in my terrible, terrible life. So there we go. All right. Well, IRS, one piece of poop. Congress. Four. Four. All right. Well, you can go to our blog for more information on things like private debt collectors and the new passport law when that will go into effect. It's irsmedic.com. You can subscribe to our channel for all uh, tax updates. Like and comment below. And thanks so much for watching.